on the cloud. All right, make sure that's on. Hey, everybody. It's Wednesday. That means it's Whiskey Wednesday. All right, and that also brings us to the fact that we're in our third day of Go Whiskey Week. So um, we, we, we've, we started with a Buffalo Trace antique collection tasting on Monday night. Last night was at Fireflies, 125 people. Uh, at Fireflies doing a whiskey dinner with Hirsch. And then tonight, we have something a little bit special planned for you. I got Sean Josephs is here, and we're going to do a vertical of a vertical pinhook tasting. I'm excited. Never been done before. Never <laughs> it's been never done been done before. before? Definitely not. All right. We're going to, we're not using, just so everybody knows, we're not using a net, and this is live. All right. So I'm working without a net tonight. I have no idea. All right, so uh, Sean, so I, I think we should have, like sort of go back. So yeah. when you started like Pinhook, and now you're doing some, you're doing distillation at Castle and Keys, right? Yeah. And you have everything going along there, and but you had a lot of these barrels that we had from MGP, the rise from MGP, which is ninety five five, which is like the holy grail of rye whiskey, exactly. And Sean was like, "Yeah, I get all these, get all these barrels of." You know, now we're going to start distilling at Castle and Key. And we sort of said, hey, well, I'm going to do a vertical. And then you said, yeah, I'll do a, I'm going to do a single batch vertical. And I said, could I do a, could I do a single barrel since you're going to do a small batch vertical? Could I do a single barrel vertical? And for like some stupid reason, you said yes. A hundred percent. No, I, I actually, I might have been here six years ago. Yeah, something like that. And really enjoyed my conversation with you and it's fun to see it all have come to fruition. Right. Um, and also the idea. So for anyone who's not familiar, you know, my background's in wine. I was a sommelier. Um, we won't hold it against you. So that's okay. Well, if even better than that, not only was I a sommelier, but I got reformed by bourbon. So I should get extra <laughs> points. Extra points. I should get extra points for it's like being born again. Isn't yeah. It? I, I came to the other side. Um, Welcome to the dark side. It's great to be here. Yeah, you go. You're uh, so the idea in wine of a vertical, right, is you you know you go into a restaurant, you see, and it's usually in a restaurant, not a store, right? And you see a specific wine from a producer, every vintage, or not every vintage, but a series of vintages with no gaps, and there's no rule about how many wine. I feel like it has to be at least five or six vintages, but right. I've seen you know twenty year verticals, and the idea is that you're tasting both. How was the one? How were? How did the grapes grow that year? But then, unlike in whiskey and wine, the bottle is the wine is changing quite dramatically in the bottle. In the bottle, right? Whereas, obviously, in whiskey, it's I mean, dusties aside, let's just say it's essentially frozen in time. Correct. Yeah. So the idea was, how do you take the idea of a wine vertical and apply it to bourbon, especially because I would say, I mean, would love your perspective too, but for me, mash bill distillery. There's so much variability, but I'd say in the end, the barrel has the most influence, like time and barrel. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Uh, where, where it's the barrel and like sort of where. Exactly. Because there is, there is sort of that, that's another variable. The, 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 the distillate itself, if everybody's doing their job, should be the, the only, the one thing you can control. Correct. After that, Ta-da! Exactly. It's left up to the, you know, the bourbon gods. I mean, it's where in the Rick House. It's what barrel that you got in. I mean, we've had sister barrels where, you know, two barrels were same distillate, same time, barreled in, sitting in the same Rick, taste different. So what you're saying was, I think, the thing that maybe many people knew, but was not the way it was explained to me by the industry. So I, I opened, when I got, you know, went from wine into bourbon and then opened a bourbon bar in 2008, I have the suppliers, as we call them, like the brands coming in and explaining this, that, and the other. And the way they explain it to you is not, it's not that it's inaccurate. It's just not nuanced. So what they'll say is the Rick House is seven stories or nine stories, and there are microclimates within the Rick House. So, you know, the barrels on the highest floor to the outer edge are aging the fastest in the center of the Rick House. In the middle, it's the coldest, so the barrels are aging slower. And that each of those, so if you broke out this, you know, if you broke if out you a warehouse. If you up and then you wanted to 
uh, to blend, you take some from here, some from there, and Correct. then you make a consistent yeah, product. It's an over, oversimplification. Right. And they would say there are 50,000 barrels in this warehouse, and on the fifth floor in this section, the barrels taste like this, and over here, they taste like that. But of course, to your point, and I think it's true to an extent in terms of like speed of aging, but then also to your point, like a sister barrel could taste wildly different. Yeah, we right? proved it time and time again. So um, that was something I kind of, again, I didn't discover it, but I got to experience it on my own, mm -hmm. right? And understand yeah. how much of a factor that is. Um, but going back to the vertical and being interested, the concept, right? the concept right. how do you apply this? And so we had made the switch, as Ryan said, to castle and key and we had purchased all these barrels and we bought them all when they were a little over one year old they were immediately shipped to castle and key and have been aging in kentucky ever since for some reason i feel like sometimes people think it's a solera which is not yeah which is something not, totally different which is not what what essentially happened is all the barrels we bought were filled within two months of each other right so they're not all the exact same fill date but they're right. within a couple months right all those barrels are moved to a warehouse and then when all of those barrels turn four years old, right? Let's say there were, I mean, this is approximately correct. There were 450 barrels of 95.5 rye, right? I take more single barrel samples than I need to create a blend of 50 barrels, right? And that's all your small batch is, is 50 barrels. Yeah. And the, that's important for people to understand that yes. too. And some of these- and so When we say small batch, there is no definition. Correct. But- but for intensive purposes, and you're sort of you're sort of uh, you're sort of uh, handcuffed because you're only going to have so many barrels, anyways. Correct. So you have to sort of say consciously, go like, okay, I'm going to do just 50 barrels because if I do 50 barrels, this should last me out to this date. Exactly. Right. And we need extra because <laughs> by because single. we're we're Two. we're blending other I, things. We're blending. We need to pull more barrels than the total size of the blend to create. A vintage and so i mean just to step into that part for a second right if if i'm going to do a 30 barrel blend i'm going to pull 45 barrels right 45 single barrel samples because it's so we were just talking about the uniqueness of the barrels so now imagine you have 45 barrels and to some degree some of those barrels might be similar to each other but broadly speaking it, each barrel is unique you're going to blend 30 of the 45 right so you want to be able to try different 30 barrel combinations out of the 45 to simply make, and this is really the whole ethos of Penhook making vintages, there is no flavor profile. There's just the goal of making the best whiskey we can at that right. moment with the way the barrels are. So you're just continue to try 30 barrel combos until you reach the 30 barrel blend. And here's the goofy part every year, even barrels you read, they said, Oh, I don't need to use that one this year. They come back, but now when they come back at you, they taste different. Exactly. So now you're like, you know, every year starting basically from scratch anyways, because the barrel's exactly. evolving itself. Exactly. Because you're pulling from a distinct pool of barrels and those are getting older as you're doing it. Exactly. And I thought that was sort of the neat concept of the whole thing when we talked about this is like, there's a finite amount of barrels and each, each year they're all changing. And that can be for the good or the bad, or, but they're all going to be changing. Correct. And then I said, and then you're going to send me <laughs> samples and I'm going to pull just a single barrel and I'm going to pick the best single barrel that I can out of this thing. And we're going to keep it going. And, and, and a lot of people have bought into the, the, this, this vertical series and have bought each year that, that they, they come out. And I've, I promised them, I said, listen, Sean's doing, Sean's doing a, a batching. We're doing a single barrel. So I will keep doing this. The idea is to get to 12, but I will do this as long as, the single barrels taste great. Yep. Because I, because I, you can you, by blending, you can you can you can change how it's going to taste. With a single barrel, I can't do that. Correct. So we're going to keep going until you know, and and we've sort of added as we go through these things, we've sort of added as if the horse was going around the track, right? That's out of the concept that we came. Side of the horse is going around the track, and we were kidding if they, well, we'll do the last one, and 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 Matt and I were kidding around. We'll do the last one on twelve, but if it's really if it's really ba bad, we'll just probably call it like glue factory, <laughs> and we'll leave it that, and that'll be the last one, and we'll walk away. But um, the the cool part is, um, and we're gonna try these right now. So the the cool part is is, is how it's sort of been evolving, 
and so far to to the better i yeah. think and I we're going to get to try tonight you guys are going to get to try our next pick which is barrel nut which is the 8 year old which is called clubhouse turn okay and the reason why it's clubhouse turn is because basically four we're going to get to 12 right we did four we got to do another four and that's the the up the one sitting in the middle would be that that barrel which would be we're turning around so we're doing four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve was sort of the idea of going around the track so what i what i think is really fun too is you know i opened a bourbon bar in brooklyn in 2008 and that was back when there was there's one maker's mark one knob creek <laughs> one basil hayden yeah. there's very little craft right single barrel picks are not a thing so i got to see it from the start and i think a lot of what you've seen in american whiskey is a lot of people being innovative and then a lot of those innovations are being copied by the larger guys which is fine i mean that's that's life that's, that's how, how it goes works. that's how it goes um but i think what's interesting about this is from the start even with the idea of doing vintages my whole point of view was i was around american whiskey every day all the time 80 hours a week in in my restaurant and bar what what can we do that is unlike what everyone else is doing because um if we're going to jump into the space we have to offer something unique and special and taking this vintage approach taking a, a wine approach essentially and so what's been interesting to me though is is kind of twofold right one is i've had people say to me i don't mean this as an insult but this is the most obvious idea <laughs> that they could think of it's just oh it's you're so just gonna stupid it, no one thought yeah, of it it's so stupid no one thought of it. it's so easy it's like yeah. If age is the thing that people are most obsessed about, if age is the most interesting thing about bourbon, wouldn't it be interesting? And rye, of course, wouldn't it be interesting to follow barrels as they age over time and yeah, truly understand be. the relationship between you can sit here with this and say, let's try four versus eight. Let's try, you know, right. five versus seven and so on and so forth. And yet no one had thought of it. And so, but again, and I think that's where you get fun perspectives. I came from wine where the idea of a vertical is a very common thing. And I applied it to bourbon. And we trademarked vertical series. So like someone else can do a vertical, but they can't call it a vertical series because we have the trademark. And what's and the and as you can imagine, you and I could probably spend five hours thinking about the nine million different iterations of verticals. Yeah. Like you could do it in every which way. Um, but what's the thing that I find cool about it is I would never say to anyone, Pinhook makes better whiskey than other people. There's a lot of great whiskey out there. But what I can say definitively is we're the only brand where you could have the experience we're about to have. So that was what was interesting to me when I had a perspective. What can we do that no one else is doing? There is no other brand where you could sit down and say, I want to taste bottlings or blends four, five, six, seven, eight year old, all the same mash bill aging in the same place. And way beyond that, right here is the only place where you could say, and we're going to taste it side by side with a single barrel from each of those years as well and right. compare a single barrel to a blend. And so I say that with a, as a point of pride, not in like, and therefore we're about to taste the best whiskey you've ever tasted in your life only to say you're about to have a unique experience right. that you can't have with any other brand in American whiskey. And that, that is a fact. And that's what's fun to me because that was kind of the whole point is like, what can we do to add something it was really just an you excuse know. for us to drink more whiskey. Well, that's that everybody's wondering. <laughs> How can we drink more Always. whiskey? And uh, that was it. All right. So we, we should probably we should probably start. So yeah. how we're gonna do this, if you have your your um you have your tray in front of you and you have also your chart, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do um we're gonna go in order. So one one is our single barrel, two is the small batch, um the small batch, okay. Then three will be, of course, five-year-old, and it'll be the five-year-old after that. So we're going to do the single barrel, the, the small batch, single barrel, small batch, all the way down. And we'll make sure you're on the right one. So just pay attention. Don't fall asleep in the back there, Leslie. I see you. All right. So, yes, I mean, thank you. Thank you. So <laughs> before we get into that thing, it was like – I, this is sort of an experience that you sort of can't get. So um, don't drink it all right away because you're going to want to go back and sort of say, okay, well, let's try that. You know, you may want to go back and try a different one again. 
So sort of take it as a sensory sort of exploration where you may want to actually backtrack and taste something against something else. OK, because these are all rise. They're all coming from the same. They're all the same mash bill. They're all coming from the same barrel group. And it's just done differently. All right. So the first one is our lock and keys, single barrel, four year old. And that's in slot number one. All right. And should we make it clear that this is a sensory experience, not a competition between my blends and your. Exactly. No, exactly. But this is like, but, but, well, but see, this is where I, I don't think, you know, everybody always do, does a competition anyways, because it's going to be what they like best anyways. But the, the point is, is that there's no way to hide. There's no way to hide a single barrel. Cause that's supposed that's a very unique thing. And Sean's job is to make the best he can make out of what he has. So the the sort of like the goals are always good whiskey, but what you have to do to get there is a little bit different, right? Yeah, yeah. I would also say keep in mind we bottle our single barrels only at cask strength. The blends I proof differently each time to G to to make it where it's going to taste the best. Make it where it's going to taste the best. And generally, what I found, which you'll see as we go through these, is that I felt like as there was more wood influence. I add felt like I had to dial up the proof because the proof kind of pushes. No, dial up the proof or add more water? No, dial up the proof. The so proof. basically what you're going to see in the blend so you get is more. over time, the proof keeps getting higher, higher and higher. higher. Okay. Because I feel like the proof is driving the sugars, okay. the fruit, right. and some of the other notes that will balance out the wood so you don't end up with something that's too mm -hmm. dry. Or so, one note, as we like to say. Exactly. So the first single barrel is 113 Point four proof, but the first blend is ninety seven proof. So I'm just saying, keep in mind, yeah, keep in proof, mind, proof and has a big impact on how you perceive. I would suggest using the Randall Bird method, um, to be, instead of adding water to the whiskey, is 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 what you do is uh, uh, that proof. Try a little bit of it, open your water up, take a drink of water, and then try it again, so that the the water droplets are the uh, actually in your mouth already, and that way you're not changing the proof of the samples. Okay, does that make sense? Everybody know the Randall Bird method? I'll, I'll demonstrate. Mm -hmm. It's funny. I think that um, I, I try not to foist tasting notes on people, but I was really struck by one having a lot of almost this like kind of wintergreen. It does. Like it's Absolutely. very. I never tell any people bright. what they should taste instead, unless yeah. it's so obvious yeah. that there's like you can't. You That's can't. how I look at it. It has yeah. this very bright minty. Yeah quality to it which i i really enjoy and i think it kind of gets and it's characteristics of, of rye too rye like which i think five. everyone always thinks of spice and rye which is a component but i actually think more of evergreen the, the herbal side of rye yeah. which if you taste really old rye it almost becomes menthol-y it mm -hmm. kind of goes on this arc of like wintergreen to minty to eucalyptus -y, to menthol -y. like right. i feel like that's the arc of of rye over time especially high you know 95 percent rye that's like right in this case all right, so that so I would do like one and then do two, and then two is um, number two is the vertical. That's the vertical series. That's yeah. the small batch, and that was that's a at, blend. Yeah, that's a blend. It's at ninety seven. Exactly proof. So that's number two. Okay, so try those two sort of like side by side and do a little. So far, like. Pretty similar, I think. There's a lot of like there's the, it's got that same thing. It's that that mintiness is still showing up. It's they're pretty they're in line. I think they're a lot lot in line. And 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 that to me that sort of makes a little sense. I don't know how it's gonna go from here, but that makes a little sense because we're only starting with like a four year old sort of a younger rye. This is I mean I think part of what we'll see too is also if you think about any one of these single barrels could have been part of the blend in mm -hmm. theory, right? Mm -hmm. Meaning in theory, you're correct. Even though it's not in the blend, there's likely a barrel very much like similar that in the blend. That, right. And I think what's interesting too, even though you, I, you and I haven't tasted a lot together is maybe we could be very much in line, meaning you're leaning towards a single barrel that has this, an element and that's and what I blending get, that I, what I got to get in the blend. Right. So it'll be interesting to see yeah. how it plays out across the other. The good thing on both of these that I will point out to, to everybody too is um, 95.5 rye and rye in general, I think um, matures uh, faster than most bourbons do, especially ones that are not high rye. Rye tends to to start maturing at a younger age. I don't really get any graininess in mm -hmm. either one of these. 
um, which is something that, you know, sometimes when you're trying a four-year-old bourbon, you can get that. And I don't get that at all in these. You get that, you get that mintiness, you get, you know, you're getting those other sort of spicy flavors, but you're not getting a grain forward flavor profile. I agree with what you're saying about the similarities, but I think the blend probably because the proof is lo lower is bringing out a little more of like the caramel sweetness. Caramel, yep. I can see that. And if you wanted, like I said, but you can, you can sort of see if that's true by doing your own thing, by taking a sip of water and, and trying one again, because that will bring the proof down a little bit too. All right. I think what interesting. One thing we're talking about too, that's interesting is I had always heard, and this to me, part of the experiment that rye has less jumps in terms of profile with maturity than bourbon. Meaning okay. If we so were it's more consistently this... getting to a point, then, then bourbon also makes leaps and bounds as the years go on. Correct. And that ultimately, but almost for that reason, at least in my experience, I'd much rather drink a 21 or 23 year old rye than bourbon because rye I think has more structure and can take more wood. Mm -hmm. But the flip well, side combines of that, with the wood, I it think, combines yeah, with the wood. the wood. And the flip side of that though, is as the rye is taking more wood, in the maybe it's like middle age, it's not showing, uh, it's uh, not expressing the wood as not, much yeah. as wood. It's not expressing as much. And then I, the, here's the only other part of this, and this is what 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 worried me when we started the project and started yeah. doing this stuff is, when does it become not rye like? You know what I'm saying? Like like sure. There's a there's a point when you start drinking like let's say older rye and stuff like that, you go like, wow, this is really good whiskey. I like this whiskey. Not necessarily drinking this because it tastes like rye, though. Yep. It's just good, but it's not like it loses some. Of, it may lose some of that rye characteristics mm. that you have when the rye is younger. That makes sense to you guys, yep. or no? She's not in her head. She just thinks that he might have something there. <laughs> All right. So number number three, number three, yeah, would be number three five would, year would be the five year. Um, and that's uh, the single barrel. Number three is the five-year single barrel, and one and number eleven point nine proof. Yeah, well, yeah, one one eleven point nine on that one, and then the um, so four number four will be the vertical five-year vertical small batch, which is at one o three. Yep. Okay. See, now, I think you're already starting to see, like, in the single barrel anyways, seeing, like, big differences right yeah. there. Yeah, I think this one was a leap. Yeah. It's got almost like a – somebody – and like I said, I don't leave anybody on a path, but does anybody get at the end sort of like a sugar cookie taste to it? Yeah, I always think of it – it reminds me of, like, a, a ginger snap. Yeah. it has some of that spice of, like, clove um, and ginger and mm -hmm. caramel. Mm -hmm. And that sort of, like – caramelized sugar that you really get in a ginger snap, usually because they have brown sugar in them too. I like the fact that we're, all, we're, we're almost like we're starting to close the gap on, on, um, on, on the ABV too, though. Uh-huh. And the proof. Yeah. And we'll it's get, getting a little it'll continue it's not getting get. closer and closer. Yeah. Um, I like that one too. Me I'm, too. Yeah. I like both of these. Less minty. Yeah. It's almost mint like is the going mint away was like, like it almost in the foyer. It was like the mint was kind of, that was the youthfulness of rye was that. Yep. Kind of fresh, yep. bright winter green, and now I almost think that's completely dissipated in in the five year. I think in the first, I think in the first one, like again, this is not we're not having a contest here, but I think in the first one, I, I liked the um, I liked the uh, the small batch better. Mm. In this sort of second set, I'm sort of liking the single barrel a little bit better on this one. But I think there was a leap in the two. Like you said, I think there is a leap in there. Which was only one year. I'm not four to five. I'm really not. Ex four to five. I wasn't really expecting a lot of yep. change. And I got a little bit more change than I than I expected on those two. Because tasted... I'm drinking some of these. I'm not trying these like side by side. Yeah. We you did. Know? I tasted the I was drinking the five year last night, the blend. Mm hmm. And what it still is reminding me of is 
which again, like you said, I try not to call out things, but it's so specific to me is that true, like vanilla extract, vanilla bean yep. quality, yep. which I really like. What are you guys, how are you guys feeling about it? Do you like, do you like I, more than, more than anything else? Do you like, I'm going to put it more in a sort of a distinct year by year. Do you like four better than five? So it could be either one. It doesn't matter which one you like. How, what are you thinking about like four year or the five year? Which one do you sort of like, are you guys leaning to? Five. Okay. I want to see if that keeps going because sometimes when you get older, not necessarily it, it, you know, everybody thinks like, Oh, it's older. It'll be better. Not all the time. And so you want to make sure that, that, that sort of like you want a progression, but you can't control that either. I try to say like, uh, just like people. Yeah. Age is not maturity. <laughs> Explain it. Yeah, I can tell you. the pain in my pain in my back today has nothing to do with my maturity level. It's just my age. Um, yes, I will agree with you on that. The five year old LNK single barrel was spicier than the four. Yeah. I, there's nothing. It was this. It was a spice, but it wasn't the same spice. It wasn't meant. It wasn't that mint. It wasn't that mint. So that didn't like jump out at you that anymore. From the four to the five, that's really really interesting. I, it, like I said, I never get to sit down there and try these like this, and now having the the small batch and being able to do that at the same time is really really interesting. All right, so let's let's um, let's try the next let's try the next set. So yeah. so five. So five, number five on your thing is going to be the the first one. Five will be the single barrel six year old. Yeah. And what was the ABV on that one? Uh, we're at one twelve. Okay, one one twelve. And the number six, the number six will be the six year old um, vertical small batch, and that's at one oh eight. Correct. So again, we're getting that. Getting, we're, we're getting a sort of a closer ABV sort of. It's sort of interesting that we can sort of try it that way too, which is sort of cool too. The nose is great. Yeah, I like the really nose cool. on five. I'm doing the I'm doing the uh, single barrel first on five. The, on six on six, I should say. It has the um, people like always like to associate it with Dickel, but it has some of that Flintstone vitamin minerality, like fruity minerality. That's what I get on. Uh, on five. I don't get like I, I've had it on, like I've had it on Dickle. I've had it on Dickle where like I, I swear to God I was chewing a Flintstones vitamin. But I'm I'm getting a little bit different on this though. I'm not getting quite that. I'm de definitely getting the minerality. But there's like a sweet uh, the mineral minerality yeah. hits a sweet. So yeah. I think that's what I'm like connecting. Yeah. Mineral water type like that. Yeah, maybe an umami. Yeah. So one thing I should point out too, the blends aside, which I proofed down, Castle and Key, where we now distill and also age all of our barrels, they have two rick houses. One is brick and is the longest rick house of its type in the world. It's one of the original rick houses that Colonel Taylor constructed in 1887. It's three football fields long, brick, really narrow. Um it's kind of surreal to be in there because you stand on one end and you see the door on the, you know, 300 yards away. It looks like this little <laughs> pinprick. Of you can run it, run it. Um, and then the other warehouse that was built in the 50s is concrete with incredibly thick walls. Okay. And if you think about traditional rickhouses in Kentucky, you're typically thinking the metal rickhouses, right. which can be seven to nine stories and obviously get incredibly hot in the Kentucky summers and get very cold. Um Brick and concrete don't warm up as much during the summer. And also there's water running through the property. Glens Creek runns through uh, Castle and Key Distillery. And so it's a very humid environment. So it's almost like a dunnage. It's almost like more yeah. like a, a, akin to like a dunnage warehouse yeah. then. And because of that, I think typically, and it was certainly always explained to me this way, that whiskey in America, the proof goes up as it ages especially in kentucky especially in kentucky and so you're evaporating more water water than you are alcohol keep in mind as i'm as we're talking about the proofs of especially the single barrels because they were bottled at cast strength 
barrel entry on 95.5 at MGP is 125. So, so they're dropping. They're dropping. So we started, number one was 113.4. So it dropped, even as a four-year-old, it dropped from 125 to 113.4. Uh, the five-year-old, 111. From, again, obviously from 125. And then the six-year-old was at 112. So you're going to get some, it's yeah, not always, always going to go down, down, exactly. down, but like, but know, that's the trend. The trend is that they're dropping. Oh, I, I don't want to spoil the surprise, but this your seven year, you picked a crazy low. Like these are going to, I, you know, it's wild. No, I just picked the best one you sent me, but no, but it's going to be, <laughs> well, that too, but these are going to be, I think a lot of these will end up being below a hundred. As we keep going, which I I don't know that there's anyone's ever seen that type of progression. Either. Well, you know, so the funny part is the funny part is a lot of people that go into go in like like they go in low and they do lose. There are other places that do that. Yeah. And they do lose. I've had people go, well, "When are they going to do a cast drink?" I'm like, "That is cast drink." Yeah, you know, d- calm down. Everything's not going to be hazmat. It's going to be one thirty. You know, one twenty. I mean, there's there's other whiskeys that they don't they don't necessarily get there, and that, that's okay too. It's sort of one of those weird things. Um, I am sort of seeing though for for um, the six year old. Yeah. What's really interesting to me is the the uh, the finish on both of these is super long. I mean, I'm tasting these like as I'm tasting them, they're staying on my tongue a lot longer than sort of the the, the we, that we were getting in the four year old and the five year old. I find the six year old. So I was staying on my tongue longer and the finish is actually long on both, both the, both the single barrel and the small batch. That's a really interesting observation because I agree with you. And also I think by the same token, it's not, I don't find that the aromas or even the flavors themselves have intensified that much, but it's more, yeah, it seems like it's more translated to the longer finish. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, like, it's yeah, like no, it, yeah, it's not no, like, I, Oh I no, it's it. six. It smells so much older, tastes so much older. It's more, the finish is longer. All right, you guys, now we, now we get, do you guys liking that? How's that going? Are you like now, now are you in love with the six year old now? It's getting better. You think both, both of them, they're tracking this out of the same, right? They're tracking as a better whiskey. Yeah, we get another little leap. I mean, they are little leaps. I, I don't think they're they're there's not they're not as similar as I would peg them to be with a year difference. Yeah. Like I would expect like I would expect four and six to be a lot different. Yep. But now that you're trying them in a in a natural progression, I'm not fine. There's leaps, but it's not like I don't know. It's an it's it's it they're 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 staying the the single barrel and the in the small batch are both staying on track. With each other, I think. I think it's interesting too if you think about. Again, I kind of end up defaulting to wine, where, to me, the idea would be. Maybe it's like better is a relative term, meaning. Yeah. I would love to make a mint julep with the four-year-old. Mm-hmm. It's already really minty, and probably doesn't even need you. Don't, wouldn't even need to muddle mint on it. Like on Derby Day, I would be like, let me take the four year. <laughs> this is this is Sean's excuse for drinking them straight, just in case you guys were wondering. <laughs> what are you drinking? Oh, I'm drinking my mint julep. Oh, what is that? Oh, it's straight rye whiskey. Yeah. Well, we'll put in like a <laughs> tiny bit of simple. He just puts the sprig on the top. So to give everybody. Well, no. So to that point, though, my favorite version of the mint julep that I've heard people advocate for is you don't even muddle the mint. You, yeah. you get a rye whiskey, which has a lot of mint in it. You put in a little bit of simple syrup, you know, to give it some sweetness. And then you just really put in a huge bouquet of mint. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's yeah. more the, about putting your nose in the mint, mint as, you, right, sip, as, you're sipping you, as you sip your whiskey than, like, m- getting it really muddling mint into it. It sounds like Sean's about uh, talking about getting to the point. <laughs> yes, sir. The 2023 bourbon that they're getting. Yeah, I mean, it says um, it's aged. I mean, the age statements on the back aged more than three years, which means that the youngest whiskey is at least three years old. It's a blend of some barrels that are just north of three, some barrels that are four, some barrels that are three and a half, probably averages out to like three years, eight months. And that, 
by the way, just as everyone's looking but at that, it. But that, but that bourbon is sort of like the, that's one of the flagships. That's that's our entry. That's your entry level. But they're, yeah. so they're going to try to whatever they have to mix to make that taste the same, close to the same year after year. Well, even on that one, I don't try to make it the same. You know? Also, vintage approach. So. Yeah. But that's what you have to work with that year. Make the best whiskey. Make the of best that whiskey year, of again. That and, and I don't keep the proof the same either. I keep it in a proof range of 97 to 100 because I think that's ideal. The way I think about our our everyday whiskeys is I don't know what someone's going to do with them. Maybe they want to drink it neat, so it needs to taste good enough for that. Maybe they're going to mix ginger ale. I have no snobbery against that. Maybe they want to make an old fashioned. Maybe they want to make a Manhattan. Whatever you want to do, you need higher proof so that the dilution, the modifiers, and the mixers don't, don't take it down. Don't so take far. it down so low because I think, for example, I do like I think Basil Hayden is a good whiskey, but I wouldn't drink it on the rocks. You put eighty proof Basil Hayden on the rocks, and like to me, three minutes later, it's too watery for me. Like I, I'm not tasting bourbon. There's anymore. no zing. There's no. Yeah. There's no. Well, I'm not tasting like the yeah, depth and richness, yeah, richness of, of it yeah, of the whiskey. They already added a lot of the water. So did that answer your question? Uh, three yeah. and a half. Three, three and a half, three and a half years around yeah. that. End. No. No, all the bourbons on the rise, each one will tell you on the if you look at the back, it'll give you the range. So that that bourbon there is we we decided that you guys were going to be trying all rise tonight. So we wanted you to have another uh pit hook that wasn't rye. And we didn't want this to be an expensive place to come to tonight. Yeah. So we picked uh we picked the thirty nine the forty dollar one and gave you a discount on it of five dollars. So we figured that would be sort of fun and you could go home and, 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 and sort of play with that. Or Sean's going to sign them all tonight and maybe you'll never drink it. I don't know. He's his signature is probably worth nothing right now, but you never know. I always tell people when I sign their bottle, it becomes $1 less valuable. That's that's about right. No, you know what it becomes? It becomes less drinkable because <laughs> you won't drink it. All right. So let's, uh, let's jump to the, uh, let's jump to the seven year old, which is, so out of like current stock for both yep. for both lineups, right? The so your seven year rye is one oh four. Yeah. So it dropped. I mean, think about that. It dropped twenty one points from barrel entry, which is kind of wild. I don't really know. Like, I, I have to be honest and say, until we move these barrels from MGP yeah. to Castle and Key, it's not like I don't have any experience with it. So I'm I'm learning as I go. Right. But I think what's really interesting is if the proof is dropping, right? You know, right. I find, I feel like what's happening is they're aging kind of at a slower pace. And I think you're getting a lot of really intense and rich flavors without mm -hmm. getting all of the heat from high alcohol. Like I right. think 104, I mean, I love the single barrel. So this single barrel to me, like screams cinnamon, right? Goes into a cinnamon, almost a nutmeg. And it's got a little bit of that, like, almost like, again, that it's not a cookie. This one, cookie to me, pie. is the most mature of what we've tasted. Oh, what we tasted. Like, well, it actually it's is. Picking, it's <laughs> ended it, but, no, but, it but is. it's showing it. But it's showing it. I think in a way more than um, what was the, the What was the ABV on this one? 104. Yeah. Which is wild. But the This is like a flavor bomb. But the flavor, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's this really flavor like is just like, like, damn. This is really, really good. Yeah. This seven year old is is um I, I really like I really like the seven year old that we did. The the, the, the ninety five yeah. five one, yes. MGP it's like, like a year, I right? think yeah, I think we Six got them when they were like fourteen months. Yeah, and then they got a little moved, bit over a year. And then they were all moved. Yeah. No. Man, I like that seven-year-old single barrel. Mm -hmm. But then I picked it, so yeah, you can't. I oh, can't but, really. Can't really so, see. by the way, though, interestingly, yes, I proofed the blend at one hundred and five. See, so matching up, matching up. That's weird. What's that? I know, really, brother from another mother. I like this one too. It's a little higher tone. Yeah, it's got a it's got more citrus. Right, it's got more it's citrus. Brighter. Tone. Right. It's got less of the the darker spice. Mm. I honestly, it's like they're like two sides of a coin. Yeah. I really, very, you know, it, it, listen, the way they're you know, it's you're blending them. So I mean, 
there is um I can tell you from personal experience of the barrels you send me. Yeah. Okay, and you send me enough that we can start really looking at we look at like how that how they're tasting and stuff like that. Yeah. There is quite a variation. Oh yeah. You know, it's like you know, um I I get some people that will send me stuff and in like if I don't go there and I have stuff sent, I I get sometimes I get stuff that's in a bandwidth. Yeah. And you can tell, okay, these have been pre-selected, and we're in this bandwidth. Okay, that's okay. Can I? Is something really good in this? If not, I'll send it back and say, can you send me something else? The the thing about what you're you you're sending me up is like they're they're all over the place, so that's good because I know it's I know it's a variation, but I know you're dealing with the same variations when you're making your single your small batches. I put a lot of effort into making sure the sets are really different. Yeah, because well, you, you, I, like do, you, you, bravo, you, you're you doing that. Because <laughs> I think it's that's part of the fun. No, it is. Right? It is. And, and by the way, there's, you know, the, they say there's a seat for every ass. So, I mean, it's yeah. one of those type of things that like what, something that I'm finding very that I like about it. Somebody else goes, oh, I don't like that. I like the I like the, you know, like a higher citrus tone to yep. this. And that's OK, too. But it's different. There's also I mean, what's interesting from the blending perspective I'd like to say there's skill, but there's a little bit of luck because we're really pulling the barrels at random. Right. So if I'm going to do it. Well, you're working. It's always working within a set. So this is a 30 barrel blend and the 40 barrels I pulled. 30 of which 30 would be blended together were really pulled at random. So it's not like there are notes on them. So they're just right. pulled. And so there is a little bit of the luck of the but draw. Every, every, every year you go back, you get a, even if you took notes on every barrel and you had them they're pegged changing to the anyway. top, yeah. right? You took the notes on that barrel. Oh, I'm going to peg that. I'm going to put it on the top. And you came back next year and you pulled bit, random barrels, but some of them had the notes on it. Yep. You'd have to throw away the notes anyways. Exactly. Because it's not really yeah. good. It's, it, they may not be accurate anymore. Exactly. Yeah, so, so you get notes that are gonna number. so yeah. yeah, but your note is all of a sudden gonna start. Oh, I should be tasting this, and you're not. Like it's 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 like you know you gotta be careful when you make notes on something. Sometimes it's leading you down a primrose path because now you're not really exploring what you're drinking. Yep. You're you're trying to find what you put in your notes, and that to me would throw me off. Yeah, it's better to just just go in. And which honestly tasting. is how we do everything. Yeah, you have to. Right. We always are starting from scratch, which is what makes it super fun. What what do you guys think of the sevens? Yeah, you like that one? Yeah. What what was your what was your um of of the ones we did? And again, they're they're the verticals and the single barrels are obviously you know different. Is there one that you like? Whether it's the whether it's the um the small batch or the single barrel. Is there one that you like? What's your favorite of of what you you got in front of you? I, and I'll ask. Um. Uh, the four-year-old single barrel. Sure, you can vote more than once. I'll let for you, for you. I'll let you vote most of the one. Uh, not, but you can't vote for all of them. <laughs> the four-year-old single barrel, right? The four-year-old vertical series. That one, okay, good. The five-year-old single barrel. Five-year-old vertical series. All right, this is weird. Six six year old single barrel. Oh, I'm getting some hands now. The um six year old vertical series small batch. Yeah. That, that would go that I think they were both good, but you're right. The seven year old single barrel. The seven year old uh vertical small batch. That's see, that's about almost like dead down yeah. the middle. I mean that's that and that's the whole point. I mean, but here you go. Because we're what we're using and how we're doing this, they should be more similar than they are different. But I think there's enough difference in here that shows a um, that shows a diversity diversification of all of these, and that's sort of surprising to me. I thought they were I, 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 my sort of like thing is as we got older, we'd probably get closer and closer. Yeah, but I don't know if that's necessarily. I don't right. think so either. Yeah, I don't think that I don't think that theory holds out. Yes. Mm. The four blend, the four small batch was closer to the seven small batch. Yeah. You found like a lot of similarities in there. I, I think, think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. 
Well, and I think what's really interesting. So that'd be two and eight on yeah. your, if you're looking at your chart. I think that's a really fun side by side. I agree with you. I think what you're saying, what you're kind of getting at is they both have this brighter, mm -hmm. you know, I said citrus, but call whatever you want, yeah. just a sort of brighter note. Yep. And your seven, your single barrel is much darker tone. Yeah, it's much right. like, like my soul. Uh, <laughs> Dark and foreboding. But I think it's, that's what's fun to me when I do the blending right. is I suppose when I did the seven-year-old blend, I could have said like, okay, it's seven years old. It's maturing. We need to figure and out. And I want to way. show it off. We need to show off the age. Right. But in the end, as I tried all these different combinations, that's the one that I thought was the best representation of those barrels. And so I think we ended up with a seven-year blend that, frankly, doesn't show a ton of age, but I still think is really good whiskey. So right. it's, and that's, you know. And that's, and that's perfectly fine. I think when we did, if I remember when we did the seven, we were just, we, as we were going through the samples, I think it just, this particular barrel, because we're not looking, we're not looking to, sh we're not thinking we need to show a progression. We're just thinking about what's the best whiskey that Sean sent us, right? I mean, and we tried, I think we were all pretty unanimous when we tried that one. We were like, oh man, that just like that richness, that depth of flavor, we were just like all enamored with. Has everyone that. tried the eight year? No, I we're getting to that. We're getting, sorry, we're I, getting, I got, I got you're jumping ahead again. Look at you, you it. like vertical hop over there. <laughs> That's okay. I'm making juleps. I'm yeah, jumping ahead. Yeah, jumping. So for tonight, um, uh, Sean and the team were very uh, 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 nice to us and sent us a preview of our eight-year-old that's about to come here. So the last, the lot, last one you have is the uh, the number nine is an eight. <laughs> it's the lock and key eight-year-old single barrel, and that one. The what was the ABV on this one? Um, so this is interesting. Your I know the blend is one hundred and seven and change. Yep, that's going to come out, and that's going to come out. You picked one hundred and thirteen. Because you know, screw that. I I love this single barrel. I think this it's is the a biggest really, mature. Like this, this is, is a big... really I I love this. I was drinking. Yeah, you like this one? I was actually when we got the sample and this we of great. course we couldn't wait. We popped one of the bottles open and started drinking it. And we were just I was just like blown away by the color and the the color is awesome on this. But the you know it, it doesn't really matter what what it looks like. It's how it tastes. And th this eight year old is like got it in spades. It's almost like even like some like, 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 like raisin. Yeah. In this, where you get sort of that spicy, like that spicy, sweet, like a dark honey or raisin. Do you know what I'm talking about? That sort of like yeah. that flavor. And I think, to, I think to that point, what I find really interesting about this is we've all seen the progression, but to my palate, this is the first one that, well, I thought the seven single barrel you picked yeah. too as well. But this one shows true maturity. Like I think of this as like, this is starting to taste like older whiskey. Like that, right. that to me is kind oh, of the journey. Oh, it does. Absolutely. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And to me, it took to getting to eight. Seven had the mature notes, like more right. spice in that. But this to me, if I were to taste it blind, I would think like, oh, I'm drinking older whiskey. Now, Which I, I didn't feel that way about. Right. And I get what you're saying. And now here's the part that, here's the part that scares me. Okay. Because eight. I, I love eight. Um, this new one, it's got that depth. It's got it's showing maturity. It's all doing all those things. And then I start worrying because I'm like, did I just hit the pinnacle mm. of the vertical? And I won't know until I get nine. But I'm just saying, but that is that is a concern. When we started this project, my concern was, and some of the guys know because we've talked about this several times when the new one comes out. I go, when is the point going to be and i hope we don't get there i hope we get to 12 but but that was the thing that scared me is like all right we get to a mature whiskey yeah do we fall off the edge before we get to 12 you know what gives me confidence what there's a brand anyone heard of will it yeah <laughs> sometimes so they used to really be known as kentucky bourbon distillers yeah. nose mill ABD. rowan's creek right mm -hmm. will it Johnny Drum, they were not distilling, they were sourcing, right? And then they got their distillery back online, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. When I opened my bourbon bar, 2008, they used to make a product called Vintage. Yep. It was a wax top. Yep. Oh, well, we had it. And 
vintage 17 year bourbon i i don't want to make anyone sad but in 2008 vintage 17 year bourbon was 34 dollars wholesale <laughs> vintage 21 year rye was 38 dollars wholesale and vintage 23 year rye was 58 dollars wholesale those bottles go for ten thousand dollars now yep and they're not worth it but they're at least worth like 250 like it was really really good whiskey the 21 year rye and the 23 year rye were phenomenal Right, they really were, but but but, but not, I had those. But that was also but, probably yeah. Well, actually, I don't know. That might have been Bernheim. It was probably Bernheim. Well, but the not. thing was with those, and I'm going to point this out to you now, yeah. is that they were really good. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Yeah, they were really good whiskeys. But I wouldn't have pegged that if you gave it to me. Oh, uh, I see what you're saying. Is I don't know rye? if I would have pegged it as mm. a rye. Interesting. If I tried them blind, I mean, oh, that's a rye whiskey. You know what I mean? It's just because it just changes so much and you sort of lose some of that. There is there is a distinct rye character that we've sort of talked about in these younger ones that still is present in, mm. present in eight. But sometimes I think when we get too far, they go, it goes past that. And now it's, just, it's good whiskey. I'm not I'm not trying to I'm not trying to say, oh, it's it, now it sucks. No, it's good whiskey, but it doesn't necessarily peg itself as rye anymore. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I know exactly what you're saying. No. What I wonder, though, this would be my counterpoint. Sure. I love this. It's like, can I say genuine ignorance? Lot? Did anyone have, <laughs> did anyone, has anyone had can a counterpoint? You guys don't remember that SNL skit? <laughs> all right. All right, guys. Uh, I got myself in trouble. Oh, no. Zuckerberg just took us off. All right. I'm sorry. 20. What is, when do you think bourbon is over the hill age wise? Okay. I mean, I know there's so, so many mash bills. Aging it, it depends on a mash bill where right. it's stored. Sure. There is a bunch of there is a bunch of things, but I will go back to. I I I was very fortunate in when I started learn when I started it doing really getting into bourbon, that I had some like really great mentors uh, at the time that were that I was like, Jim Rutledge and and Elmer T Lee and Eddie Ru Russell and. Those guys and 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 Drew Culverson, I we you know we were we were there at an early age and I had a lot of them talking to them. One of the things that like Elmer T. Lee had always told me, he says, Ryan, at at, at Buffalo Trace, our sweet spot is eight to twelve years. Mm -hmm. And he says, you'll notice that most of my the because he he was really well. I mean, he was Blanton's. I mean, that's what Elmer's claim. Elmer's footprint on the bourbon world is is Blanton's. Correct. And he said, you'll notice that I most of the blends that I pick are from eight to 10 years old. Mm -hmm. Now, that, now, that's not to say that there isn't a 10 or 11 in there or anything like that. But the majority of them are in there. He said, Burb, and his exact quack, quack quote was, bourbon was never meant to last yeah. like 20 years. Just the way it's made and how it's stored and what we do. We, he goes, I would never put something in a virgin oak barrel in the Kentucky heat and expect it to get to 20 years. Exactly. So that's sort of like, I, I don't think he was wrong. I agree. And, and you have to, the, the, and here's the difference though. If I go out and try to find a single barrel in that age range, I might have to look hard, really hard to get there. I've done this with Dickel. I did a 14 and like, a, I did like a 14 and something year old Dickel. And I really had to go through a lot of barrels before I got to a certain point with the tasted right. If I would have been blending, I probably could have gotten there sooner because I can I can take some of that away by blending. Yep. And in and in some of those ones where you're seeing older whiskeys, you're seeing people draft they're they're pulling whiskeys from the bottom rung or you know where it's cooler or whatever and mixing in with other things to come out with a general profile that's different. If they just tried to get a single barrel from, you know, it's not gonna last 20 years, but I'm just saying from the sixth floor. Yep. <laughs> It's going to be different, and I think that's where the, that's where the if you're going to do stuff like that, that's where the the, the magic side of it has to come into is you have to be able to know what to put together to make it not a one note, as I say, like sucking on a church pew. Yeah, they all would. For we, we I, yeah, we've actually tried. There's a couple of people here. We were fortunate enough with um, the Fraser Museum. For well, I tried the I tried that. Yeah. Undrinkable. It's undrinkable. Undrinkable. Yeah. We tried 40, 40, what was it, 42 and 43? 42 and 44. Undrinkable. Yeah. And you know, like the old space balls when they go plaid? Yeah. We went, we went to mint. 
And it all you could taste was like that. It was like a heavy dose of wood spice mint that just drove right through your tongue. So what I said, I tasted at Kentucky Artisan Distillers. I don't know. It was the same idea. It was like 42-year-old bourbon. And my tasting note was it tasted like someone had crushed out a menthol cigarette in old coffee. Yeah, that's that's pretty close. That's pretty good. And it was the same texture too. Like yeah, all, it's like, not had no, that point. Yeah. yeah, there's no texture left. Yeah, terrible. So I mean, you know, I don't think we're gonna get to. I don't think we're gonna get to that range, going up to twelve years on this. But when I taste number eight, and I'm like, man, that that eight year old, I'm like, wow, that's really good. That that is the thing that hits in the back of my head, going, oh, oh wait a minute, you know. But now that I said that, he won't send me any that. <laughs> no, because I well, I think what I was getting at though is the twenty one and twenty three year vintage rye were really, really good. And yeah. maybe to your point, they didn't maybe they taste less rye like. Right. But they were still delicious. So I guess in my mind, like That's okay. I'm, I'm curious at what point maybe they taste less rye like, but I think they'll continue to taste good. Taste good. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. You know what? You'll just have to send me barrel samples and I'll be the judge of that's right. That's <laughs> that's exactly what's gonna happen. That's exactly what's gonna happen. Yes. 450 barrel distillation. So there's been a yeah. range, right? So we started, the initial batches were larger, uh, but then also we're doing, sing so they're only, also to put it in context, I believe this year we only did 16 single barrels of rye for the entire country, right? So we're in a very small group. Yeah, so it's the 16 barrels plus the 30 barrels that, 32 barrels we blended this year. So that's 48 total. Right. Um, but yeah, I think it's actually a really good point. I mean, there is a part of me that would say, well, at some point we can just make the blend smaller. Obviously Ryan always gets his single barrel. We can shrink the single barrels and we can push it a little further. Right. And maybe someone wants a 13, 14 year old rye and you know. Yeah. We don't want it to call it glue factory. So there you go. Um, if I ever had, I, I cannot pinpoint a rye that I had that was overly wooded. Mm. I cannot pinpoint one in, in my, <laughs> my very small brain of one that I had that that was so far, because usually without the exception being like that vintage that KBD put out, there was not many that went that long. Rittenhouse was, 25. Yeah, but which, most, yeah, which was fine. Yeah. But, but I think. But more than likely, if you're going to see something going that old, it's going to be a bourbon, not a rye. Only because of popularity and how, how, how much rye is being made. I mean, there's a lot more rye being made right now than there's that there has been since, like, Prohibition. So, I mean, now you may see older ryes popping up that you wouldn't have seen, you know, 10 years ago. Only because there, there wasn't any that were going to make it that long. And, and primarily, most ryes are drunk at, like, you know, Four, six, four, five, six years old. Anyways, look at what's on the shelf. And they can because they're good. Most of them are good at that age. Aside from this evening, do we have a lot of rye drinkers here normally? Yeah. yeah. Just get out. Sure. Just get out. <laughs> what's that? Yes, we don't just give me it. It's whiskey's whiskey. No, no. Yeah, well, that might get that right. You never know. So, um, all right. So now... We've 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 done the whole thing. Now you can only vote for one. All right. Oh. oh, oh. oh. All right. I'm just gonna say. Uh, uh, let's say. Let Let's do it this way. Uh, four year old single barrel. Four year old small batch. Five year old single barrel. Five year old small batch. Six year old single barrel. Six year old small batch. Seven year old single barrel. Seven year old small batch. Okay. Eight year old single barrel. Yeah. Well, I guess I'll have no problem something that new barrel. Shot. <laughs> it is a really good barrel. Really I mean, good. it's a really good barrel. It's it's really the, good. The, 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 we were, we were blown away when we started drinking it. So this is something I'm, I'm, I'm glad you all came tonight. And, um, you know, of course, I'm honored to have Sean here with us tonight. Thank you so much. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope that, uh, it sort of opened your eyes of like like sort of how things mature and and how they go and sort of the difference between small batches and and single barrels, even if it even if that's all it did, it just showed you it's like you know, 
there's an art to putting together small batches, especially when you're doing it at like 30 freaking barrels. It's not a lot. Um, and the thing with single barrel is a single barrel is a very, very particular thing. And not every barrel can be a single barrel because not every barrel would you like if I gave it to you as a single barrel. So there's a thing about being picky about picking. Um, and that's that's true, too. So I hope you had fun tonight. Well, thanks, Sean. Thank you Coming so much. For us tonight. I um, should point out as a um, as a as a gift, I suppose, to everyone that we we held the price. Usually the price goes up every year because it's we're sitting on cash. The whiskey's older. We're right. losing. When he started, he said they were not going to change price. That's what he told me. No, come on. Um, but anyway, we did hold the price this year. So the eight year rye is oh, the same about the as same the seven. seven. Yeah. Okay, I mean, great. Same single barrel and yeah, that's and perfect. Blend, so that's perfect. All right. <laughs> like, yeah, just so you make sure. Well, that, I mean, the eight year blend should be here shortly. next week. I yeah, think. it should be here shortly. Yeah. So I, I'll go through. Um, let me let me end this, and we're going to end it on Facebook, and we're going to we 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 can still continue with because I want to go through some pricing and all that stuff with you guys anyway. So thank you everybody on Facebook. If you ever want to see this, you can go to Insta Liquor Talk and wherever you get your podcast, or you can go on to Julio's Liquors Facebook page and look at videos, and you'll see them. They're all labeled and everything. It'll say it'll say uh, you know pin hook tasting uh, vertical versus. Single barrel versus uh, uh, small batch. So thank you very much for coming tonight. And uh, all of you on Facebook, you really should have been here. It was awesome. I'll stop the recording. Thank you.